afternoon, everyone. It's the new pod racing circuit. We are now in the semi-pros. No longer are we amateurs. We are fighting for some real money. We are trying to get those truckets. We are going to win some races. Well, of course I say we, but that's not true, is it? Because we are not racing. Why would we do that when we can watch other people race for us? I enjoy sitting on my chair and watching other people defy death, defy gravity, and defy physics. I'm not going to be a part of this, but I'm just going to place my bet make my money, and hopefully come out a little bit more on top than I was last time. We have a whole host of exciting new races. We are going to go back to the planets that you've seen before, but the tracks have been shifted. We are going to go howling through Howler's Gorge. We are going to Doug through Doug's Derby, and we are going to Baru through Baru's Circuits. No, I don't know what Baru means. But, at any rate, we are going to have an exciting time. We are going to see some races, and we are going to watch some devastating crashes. What say you? Place your bets, get your money on the tracks, and away we go! Good afternoon, and welcome to this week's pod semi-annual, semi-pro semi pod racing circuit. We are back on the watery world of Aquilaris, where we have a world famous for fish, fisheries, and feta cheese. Don't ask where the feta cheese comes from. It's an exciting race. This time we are following Jinto Pagalese. He is known as the Somersault Sultan, known gaining this nickname last year as he was shot up by the Tuscan Raiders in the final race. It was very intense, he did a few somersaults as his pod racer is in fact round. Of course, we all know he's got a little bit of a problem and so this should be a very interesting race while we follow him through a windy course full of tricks, corners, and an audience that is thirsty for blood. Let us see how he does. We are at the start. We are at the starting line. We can see Team Joe Pagalese is near the beginning. His engines are revving. And, oh, everyone is ready to go. And they're off. And, oh, he takes an early lead, but he manages to make... He is bopping back and forth. He is making... Oh, he's a little wobbly. He's not nearly as streamlined and narrow as others we have seen, such as Bullseye Navoir. We may have been hitting the sauce a little bit before this race, but as you can see, we are very much on a very similar track as we were before, but we are still underground. We can see Bullseye Navar is in second, and Mars Goo is in third. This is a very, this is very intense. He's weaving back and forth. Again, kids, let it be known, drinking and pod racing is not a good combination. In fact, pod racing is not a good combination with anything, especially nothing. He's making it, oh, and of course, folks, he failed to make it through the gates, but as we can see, it seems like no one else is smashing through the gates. We can see Fud saying is squarely in seventh. We can see the, there are a few more bringing up the lead, up the rear, Clegg Holdfast is in tenth, and we are not doing well because I completely forget who is who. It's been a while, folks, we've been away, and I don't know which racer is which anymore. But, as we can see, Team Topaglis is in the corners. See, this is a very weavy part. You have to go around those buildings. If you can't make those corners, you're gonna smash your pod. And that is what Team Topaglis is doing. Oh my gosh, folks. Oh, and he's trying to go for the ramp. And he failed to make the ramp because, again, folks, he is wobbling. You cannot wobble, folks. You have to stay on the track. You have to stay true. You have to not bounce off the walls. Because if you bounce off the walls, you're gonna slow down because friction exists. This is a very intense race. It's not actually that intense. He is very far out of the lead, but he has to repair in front of the audience. What an embarrassment. We know he likes to show off in front of the audience. You can see here he's trying to show off, but his pod racer just isn't responding because he keeps smashing it up because he's drunk. Folks, don't drink in pod race. But, place your bets. Place your bets, folks. I hope you've placed your bets. And we have Team Toe down for the second time. This is not going well, folks. He may be in first, but I'm not sure he can hold it. As we know, folks, sometimes the lead tends to fall in the back. We can see the back is holding the back, and we can see the front is holding the front, but we don't know what that's going to do in the second lap. These are very long. This is, this is a very long track, folks. It's a very, very long track. You can already see that this is going to be about three minutes per lap. Compare that to the Mongaza Speedway last in the amateur circuit when each lap was a grand total of about 10 to 15 seconds. This is very much a long game. It's a long game. You have to plan ahead. You have to watch those curves. You have to hold your breath as you go underwater. Well, maybe not that last part because they are, in fact, tunnels going underwater. But he is pulling to the sides. One, 
because his pod racer is broken, two because of other reasons as previously stated. You gotta keep on top of your game. These, we are no longer in the amateur circuit. We can see that the track is harder. We can see that it's very windy. He is bouncing up. He's off the ramp. He's trying to take care of his pod. We can see the submarines going by underneath. Little known fact, Qui-Gon Jinn once used that, the famous Jedi Knight. But of course, we all know what happened to him. If you've watched any of the news from whatever little backwards planet he died on. I mean, hey, we all know he died. So, but we are back in the race. We can see Team Toe crashed again. This is, uh, my goodness, folks, my goodness. We can see that everyone else is about holding position. Generally speaking, there's not too much going on in terms of contention for different spots. Blood Zang dropped a little bit in the back, but Team Toe Bagley's cannot handle those building turns. He cannot handle them. He's trying to gain ground. We can see that he just took second because of it, and he's going for the shortcut. He took the shortcut. I'm not sure how much of a shortcut that was, folks. It didn't seem to do anything, but he tried it, and he didn't die. So that's a step up for him. And he's taking the ramp, and he made it up the ramp, folks. Good for him. But he is now halfway done with the second lap. Lap, as I mentioned in the last lap, Bullseye Nav War is buying for first now. It's not going nearly as well as it was for Team Tobaglis. I hope you didn't put your money on him. I never put my money on the front runner. Well, I take that back, folks. Sometimes I put my money on the front runner, the one that we are covering today. We had a nice upset last time with the final, where the one we were watching won. It was a very exciting race, folks. I don't know any other adjective other than exciting because I am apparently very monosyllabic. But we are, yes, I know that means not what I think it means. So, but we are up. He is now in second, folks. He is somewhat holding position, but we can see that, oh, oh, Juan Sandage has now taken second. He is buying against Juan Sandage for a second. Juan Sandage has taken second. They are smashing into each other, and he needs a repair. He's going to slow down. He is not going to hold it, folks. He is not going to hold second. He was in first by a wide margin for the first lap and a half, but he smashed into the walls. He cannot take the turns. He is smashing into Juan Sandage. He has to repair his pod unless he wants to die for the fourth time, third time, some number of times. He is not doing well. He's not going to hold it. I am predicting he will come in near the last he will come in 11th or 12th. That is my end of lap two prediction. Which, as we all know, who knows what's going to happen. But he is still in third. He's coming in third into the third and final lap. We are now almost six minutes into this race. This is a very fast-paced race. We can see him going 370 units per unit. I guess pretty quick. I don't know what the units are, but... These are high speeds, and we have Ev Endicott now vying for third and fourth. Ugh, he is not doing... Oh, he dropped back. He took he took the ramp. He jumped both Juan Sandage and Ev Endicott. We have Arc Bumpy Roos, who is now in second. Arc Bumpy Roos has taken second, folks. This is a this is a positional jump, and we can see who appears to be someone with a green and blue flag in 12, as they have been the whole race. And they are just falling further and further by. And Glick Holtzfast is now in 11th rather than 10th. But Vetsang has also been dropping back consistently. Although Vetsang is clearly trying to hold on to 8th. He's trying to lead the front of the last pack. But here we have Team Topaglis, drunk as a skunk, leading... Oh, no, he was leading the middle pack. He is now out of it. He has died for the, again, who knows the number of time. This is, oh, this is not doing well, folks. Like I said, my end of second lap prediction is holding true. He is dropping. He is now seventh out of 12. He was leading so well. We can see Bullseye Navoir. He may, he may have started in second by a wide margin, but gosh darn it, he took the lead well. He's small. He's nimble. We've seen him race. We've watched him race before. He likes to stay tri tight, tight, tight. But, uh, tight and true to that road, and he knows how to turn. This is, oh, I think we just saw Sebulba use a little bit of a flame tactic. Is Sebulba in this race? Doesn't look like it. I don't know what I just saw. Maybe someone just blew up. Maybe I should pay attention. I am the commentator. I should probably pay attention to the race. But, oh, we can see Team Toe has now come in from 7th up to 5th. He is, Clegg, hold 
fast though, and gain fast. Clegg hold fast has gone from a solid 11th throughout 90% of the race up into 6th. Oh, and that's going to hurt Team Toe Bagley's. Although, Team Toe is now coming up on Ed Edelcott. He's past Ed Edelcott. He is now in 4th. This is very... This is so much more exciting than I thought it'd be, folks. He's now in fourth. He's now in third. He is catching up, folks. He is catching up. He may actually medal this race. He will not come in 11th or 12th. He came in fourth. He almost medaled. He had the lead, and then he dropped the lead, and then he dropped down way into the back. But, folks, he pulled it out at the very end to come in fourth, a respectable position, if not a meddling position. And folks, I think we have to give him a hand on that one. I hope you will all join me next week as we go on to our next race, which is... Howler Gorge! Join us next week as we go on Howler Gorge and we experience more exciting mod races. We can lose lots more money and we get to watch more people blow up and die. Good night and good luck.